Hello. In this video, we're going to go through the eat and the sleep methods. So what you'll notice down here in Animal Runner is that we have four loop structures. One loop structure is simulating the animal, the lion one trying to eat ten times. The second loop structure simulates the sheep one trying to eat ten times. The third loop structure simulates the lion one trying to sleep ten times. And the fourth loop structure represents sheep one trying to sleep ten times. So let's start with analyzing this chunk of code here. So we've created a lion object up here, a lion type called lion1, and it creates a new object called lion, and then we, we say lion1.eat. So what we know about this is that there are common eat elements for both sheep and lions, and there's unique elements for the lion. The sheep has no unique eat code. So when we wrote this code, the lion got its own overrated version of the eat class. And what it does is it says, in the way I've structured the logic is that it randomly generates a number from 1 to 2. If the number is 1, it calls the eat method passing true. If i is anything else, it calls the eat method passing false. So we have also have an overloaded eat method, which is private. And so that means we're going to call the eat method in the line class. And it says if it's daytime, we have some random random number generation and the logic here is that a lion is less likely logic is lions are less likely to catch food during the day so we have some random number generator and then if if we're successful meaning that if the number generated is greater than or equal to seven um, we want to eat and that's where we want to call the common elements for the for the common elements for the eat class. The line's been successful, so simply we want to add one to the string. So I want to call the eat method, which is in the super class. And that's where I use the super modifier. So I say super.eat. So when the compiler sees this, it knows not to call the eat method inside the immediate class, but to go up to the next level. And again, if it doesn't find an eat in the level above, it will go to the level above that, and the level above that, and so on and so forth. So I know this, this eat invocation is going to call the eat in the animal class. Now here's the thing. I want to write out if the lion's eating or the sheep's eating. And it could be a sheep or a lion calling this eat method here. And that's where we use the instance of call. Really important call to, to use. We've used it before when we were doing grid world. So I say if this instance of lion, it outputs lion eating. Else if this instance of sheep, it says sheep is eating. and in both cases, we add one to the string. So now if I go to the animal runner and I run this, we see here hunting failed, hunting failed, lion eating, lion eating, and then hunting failed. So the lion didn't eat very often. Now in the sheep's case, the sheep got to eat every time. Now that's because sheep eats grass, and presumably there's always grass in our program. So let's look at this one. So in this case, the second loop structure here, when I call sheep1.eat, the first place it's going to look is in the sheep class, and it's going to look in here, and it's going to see there's no eat method. So then it's going to go up the hierarchy to the animal class, and then it says, is it an instance of a lion? No. Else if, is it an instance of a sheep? Yep. So we see the sheep is eating, and then we add one to the string. And that's all there is to it. That's why the sheep always gets to eat, because it always calls this method directly. Similar type of logic with the sleep method. We said that lions can always sleep because they're never threatened. That is the design specifications for my program. So when I call the sleep method using the lion object, what it does is it goes to the lion class and it looks for a sleep method, which it won't find. Since it hasn't found one, it goes up the hierarchy to the animal class, looks for a sleep method and finds it. And you notice the sleep method is almost identical to the eat method in that it simply checks if it's an instance of a lion or instance of a sheep and then prints out a message accordingly and adds one to string. If I look at the sheep demonstration, again, the sheep can only sleep if there isn't a predator around. So when I call sheep1.sleep, we've actually overridden the sleep method inside the sheep class. 
and here it is right here. So what I did was I created a predator present, which is a randomly, randomly generated number, which simulates whether or not there's a predator in the immediate vicinity. And if there is, it's going to say the, the, the sheep can't sleep and it's on guards, and then it prints out, it calls the protect method to print out sheep protecting. And if there is no predator, then we call super.sleep, which again calls the sleep method in the super class and prints it out. I hope this video helped understand those two methods. In the next video, we're going to look at Animal 2 Runner, and we're going to talk about, well, why is it beneficial to do this? Good luck.